writing programs in machine language, like in the 1960s and early 70s, that's something that today not many programmers have the chance to do. Let's relive that experience today on this minimal 8-bit CPU I've designed and built on breadboards. We'll be writing a couple of short test programs to get a feeling for the architecture and to see what it's like programming right on the metal. We'll be using nothing more than the front panel keyboard and an opcode table here. If you think that could be good fun, let's get started. So let's take what you see here and make it do something. But this video is really only part one of a programming miniseries inside my minimal 8-bit CPU channel. In part two, I'll be introducing an assembler. This little piece of software I've written specifically for my CPU architecture will allow us to write programs quite comfortably in the more human-readable assembler language. We'll be writing text files on a modern system using mnemonics and labels and all that stuff and then let the assembler translate our programs into machine language and upload it into the memory of the minimal CPU. In part 3 we will go one step further and program on an emulator running on Windows. This emulator simulates the minimal 8-bit CPU cycle exact and in real time and includes a terminal output. It allows us to conveniently play around with the system without physically having to build it. In fact, to be honest, I've developed and optimized the whole CPU architecture with the help of this emulator before I even dared to build it in hardware. Otherwise, I never would have been able to figure out and fine-tune all the different design aspects of this system. Along with my next videos, I'll be releasing the minimal 8-bit assembler and the minimal 8-bit emulator for the Windows operating system. So stay tuned! But ok, today let's do some real programming. We can use the keyboard as a kind of front panel to toggle in hex data, like so. We can put a byte on the bus and either deposit it in the MSB or LSB of our program counter. Let's do that. We can also deposit that value at the RAM location our program counter is currently pointing to. So let's write FF to the RAM location 0. Note that the program counter has incremented by 1. And we can keep writing FF into the memory of our computer. So that's all we really need. Let's start by writing a program that prints out the letter A to our terminal screen up here. Since this system uses memory mapped I.O., we can send the content of our A register to the VGA terminal by simply writing to memory address hex 8000 or higher. The instruction that does that is STA for store A at address. But prior to that we should load the ASCII code of the letter A into the A register by writing LDI hex 41. I'm using the dollar sign to denote numbers in hex format. Now I want to input this program into the RAM of the CPU, let's say at address 0. To be able to do this I have to assemble it into machine language by replacing the human readable mnemonics LDI and STA by its opcodes. Let's look them up in our opcode table here. You probably won't be able to see it on camera but the opcode for LDI is hex 0b and for STA is hex 16. So let's write that down. So this would be 0b, 41, 16, 0, 80 in machine language. Note that I've broken down the address 8000 into its LSB 00 and MSB 80 since our CPU is little endian. Now let's write our little program into RAM. First we need to make sure that the program counter is correctly set to 0, which it is. And now we can just simply input the bytes we've just assembled. So let's 0b deposit 41 deposit 16 deposit 0 deposit 80. 
deposit. So before we can start our program, we need to set the program counter back to zero. So let's do that. We are ready to start the clock now. And yeah, it prints out the letter A for us. Uh, but hang on, why is it doing it repeatedly? Well, we have to keep in mind that the whole memory, except for our program, is filled with zeros. And hex 00 happens to be the opcode for NOP or no operation. So the program counter raises up to 7FFF doing nothing, executing all these knobs and then jumps back to 0, printing out another A. So we could greatly speed things up by jumping right back to STA after we have printed out an A. Let's add a jump to address instruction, JPA, and let's uh, calculate the, the jump address. So that's address 0, 1, 2. We need to jump to address 2. Well, we need to assemble that again. And uh, mm, let me grab my opcode table to look up the, the opcode of the jump instruction. That's hex 14. So let's write down a 14 here and put the LSB first, which is 0, 2, and the MSB of our jump address, which is 0. So let's add that last instruction to our program. It's going to be at address 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we need to go to address 5, like so, and input our data. That's a 14 deposit 0, 2 deposit 0, 0 deposit. All right, let's start our program again. And wow, yeah, that's running much faster now. Let us play around some more and make the CPU display what we type on the keyboard. For STA8000, we can use the equivalent OUT operation, which saves us two bytes. And to read in a typed character from the terminal, we can either use LDA hex 8000 or the more convenient wait on terminal input or win. So let's do that. And we need to jump back to address 0 to repeat that. So again, let's use jump to address, this time address 0. And this is going to be our second program. Now we need to assemble it. Um, wait on terminal input, that's a 0, 1. Output A to terminal, that's opcode 0, 2. And we already know JPA, it's 14. And we need to put a 0, 0 here. OK, let's set back the start address to 0. And let's input our little program here. So that's 0, 1, deposit, 0, 2, deposit, 14, deposit, 0, deposit, and deposit again. Let's jump back to address 0 and start our program. Let me get rid of our piece of paper here. And well, at the moment you can't see anything, but hey, I can use it as a typewriter now. Let us get a little more ambitious and assemble this program that prints out the whole character set to our terminal. We start by initializing A to 20, which is the space character. Next we output A to our terminal and increment A so we are ready to display the next character. Down here we have our first branching instruction. It's a branch on plus or branch on positive. So as long as A stays below 128, we jump back to address 2, which is our out instruction. If we are outside this range from 20 to 127, we hit this jump to address 00 down here, which starts our program from the first line again. Okay, let us assemble that. So LDI again is 0B, 20, out is 0, 2, and increment is 0D, 0D, 
branch on plus is down here. It's 3E, 3E, and we have to put the LSB first. So that's 0, 2, 0, 0. Jump to address is again 14, 0, 0, 0, 0. This should be it. Let's input it again. Let me get rid of my opcode table here so we can input our program. PC is already set back to zero, so that's okay. Um, let's enter the first instructions. 0B, deposit, 20, deposit, 0, 2, deposit, 0D, deposit, 3E, deposit, 0, 2, deposit, 0, 0, deposit, 14, deposit, 0, deposit, and deposit again. Let's reset the program counter and start our program. And yeah, as you can see, it prints out all the characters to our terminal screen. Programming like this is a breeze, isn't it? But writing longer programs is certainly possible, but also very tedious and error prone. In case you insert an instruction somewhere, you have to work out all the jump addresses from scratch and change them everywhere manually. I certainly don't want to do that too often. I believe that this may be the reason why some people get bored by simple CPU designs like that pretty quickly, as soon as they get past, let's say, implementing Fibonacci numbers. But as I said earlier, this video is really only the first step. In the next two episodes, we will be using more powerful tools like an assembler and an emulator. These will make life on a minimalistic system like that not only possible, but quite enjoyable. We will be able to exploit the hardware to its full extent and keep our programs neatly organized and human readable. I will be releasing my minimal 8-bit assembler as well as the minimal 8-bit emulator on Windows alongside with my next videos. So stay tuned! And if you like what I do on this channel and if you don't want to miss out on anything, please subscribe and leave me a thumbs up. Take care. Bye.